am is on lit YouTube channel. I'm Sebastian. <laughs> and I'm Eric. <laughs> we're bringing you a ton of content to grow your Amazon business. And we're screaming because everyone else screams in YouTube videos. And we want to be like everybody else. And that's why we do what everyone else does. <laughs> because we have no brains. <laughs> but one difference, we do have a successful Amazon business, a real business, eight figures, and we're always dropping content, and we're always showing you what we're doing. And we're standing in that successful Amazon business right now. Look at all these products. That's right, we're not on a beach, we're not in a fancy car, we're not in a rented home, we are in our place of business. 20,000 square feet, over 4,000 active ASINs, hundreds of thousands of products, 35 employees. This is what we do for a living. The real deal. The real deal. If you wanna be a part of the real deal, smash that subscribe button, turn on notifications, follow us on social media, and be a part of it. Stay lit. Black Friday, what that means to us is this year is coming to a close. There's a lot of opportunity to pull as much sales revenue as humanly possible out of these last couple weeks. For us, when do Amazon sales usually, right around 18th to 20th, right? Amazon sales start dropping, actually maybe early 20s, like 20th, 21st. Basically, when people can't buy something and it can be at their house for the holidays, that's when Amazon sales stop dropping off. So right around the early 20s, 20, 21st, people stop buying as much on Amazon and then we see some of our slowest sales days on Christmas specifically. New Year's is pretty slow um, and the days in between, it's just not our best week. It's probably our worst week all year except for that week maybe in July where everybody travels. On vacation traveling, yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, but there are some ways to increase those sales and not only increase those sales, but there are some things you should be looking at taking that time of slow sales instead of refreshing your seller's app 67 times to make sure you're making money to plan for the future. And that future is 2020, a brand new decade to crush it. That's exciting. Are you excited about 2020? Yeah. I didn't realize it was a brand new decade till you said it. Yeah. It's yeah. enlightening. <laughs> a whole new decade. That's crazy. This decade was crazy. Yeah. Ten it was. years. Yeah, it was. Two thousand ten. Yeah, two thousand ten. What were you doing in two thousand ten? Oh, let's not talk about <laughs> it. It was a good year. Two thousand ten was a good year. Two thousand ten, according to Sebastian, was a good year. Just not for me. Just not just <laughs> according to Sebastian, it was a good year for everybody else. Just not for him. But two thousand nineteen was a phenomenal year. Oh, yes. And two thousand twenty is gonna be even better. So. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand twenty is gonna be a game changing year for us. We're continuing to innovate within our warehouse and within our production and within the realms of control we have within the Amazon marketplace to kind of continue to grow and become and maintain our presence as one of the largest Amazon sellers in the country, which is, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah. Would you of agree? Course. Of course, the market, the environment, the products are constantly changing, fluctuating, uh, and we want to stay ahead of the curve, whether it's uh, the way we source products or whether it's uh, the technologies that we're bringing to help us uh, be more efficient. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So some things to keep in mind to grow your Amazon business in 2020 now that the year is coming to an end are, um, you know, definitely building as many relationships as possible in 2019, especially in these last couple weeks, right before everybody's on vacation for the holidays, is creating as many accounts if you're, if you're going the wholesale route as humanly possible, or even if you're doing the private label route, talking to as many manufacturers as possible, and even 
if you're doing retail arbitrage, building relationships with the managers of the stores that you're doing retail arbitrage with, right? So you can get that backroom access, that side door access, right? You can get access to those pallets that um, they have an influx of or the returns or, or the discounted products before they hit the shelves. And with December 1st right around the corner, if you have not, I'm gonna assume you had a profitable year, but if you have not spoken to a CPA yet, you need to mm -hmm. in order to try to uh, lower your tax bracket and, and lower what you're going to be paying for 2019, well, in April of 2020 for 2019. Um, you know, we'd like to meet with our CPA at least quarterly at minimum. Uh, and same thing with you guys. If you have any uh, last minute purchases that you can make, if you're planning to make a big purchase in 2020, uh, December might be the time to make that purchase uh, to lower your expenses. But I would first, of course, speak to your CPA. If you don't have one, you need one. Uh, at the end of the day, it costs a couple dollars, a couple shekels, but it could save you a couple shekels. Yeah. And then some. Yeah, like some things we're going to, what are some purchases we're going to close out before the end of the year? We just talked about some travel expenses. We're going to be booking, year, right. booking some trips for next year um, at the end of this year. We're also going to be Warehouse going, equipment. We're yes, looking at some warehouse equipment. Some warehouse equipment. Also some advertising. Yes. We're going to be going a little more aggressive, spending some more money on advertising so we can write that off as well. Um, also some uh, other equipment like camera equipment and lighting equipment, stuff like that. So anywhere you could spend additional money, it's, it's definitely good for those 2019 taxes. But like Sebastian said, we're not CPA. So talk to some, talk to a professional. Right now we operate a 90% wholesale business, 10% private label. The private label is growing. Sebastian just created, it's actually sitting over here about three feet from us. We got a full pallet. Um, of products that Sebastian created and I'm super excited about them. We're currently building the listing as we speak. He was just on the phone with uh, one of the team members who's helping us build this and, and we're excited about it. But something to consider, right? Um, we built this business, Sebastian built this business on retail arbitrage and I think something that a lot of you may not be capitalizing on is what we touched on a couple minutes ago and that's building relationships with, with store managers. And, and what that can look like is like you have to sell yourself to them and make them know, believe that you can bring them value. Right? And something that comes to mind is like explaining to them the time they can save by offering you those discount racks before they even have to load up the racks. Because what that means is, hey, they give you a call. Hey, uh, John, hey, Stacy, whatever your name is, I got 50 products I'm about to put on the discount rack. Do you want to come pick them up? It saves them time. They don't have to pay an employee to fill that discount rack just to have you come in with your arm and swipe it all into your grocery cart. And then they have to reload it again and refill it again. And then you come the next day and swipe it all into the grocery cart. So by you presenting this idea to them, it could actually save them time, which saves them money and save you time, which saves you money. So it works out for all parties. I mean, right from the get go, uh, you want to try to build any relationships you can that could be advantageous to your business. Uh, early on in RA, uh, you know, for us, we also became close with some of the managers at the different stores and some of the employees there, and they would reach out to us, like Eric said, and let us know when things were going on sale or if a pallet of a product came in. They would call us before they even put it on the floor, knowing that, like Eric said, we could come load it up in our van and and just leave, and they would never have to even put it on the show floor. Mm -hmm. And we also of course, took care of them, you know, throw, throw them some holiday money, uh, you know, just, just really took care of them. And, and so it was advantageous for both parties, us and them. Yeah, really any relationship mm -hmm. you're building, you need to look what value you could bring to that relationship. If you're just looking for what you can take from the relationship, that relationship's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Sebastian talks about it all the time. It's like a girlfriend, boyfriend relationship or any significant other relationship. It's a take, give, take, give, and then gain relationship. You can't just take, take, take and expect the other person to reciprocate. It just doesn't work like that. And business relationships are the same exact way. So you need to give in order to receive. And it's revolutionary. It's 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 how we've built the relationships we've built. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, we've had a lot of help from some of our, our suppliers, you know, billion dollar companies. Uh, why, why do they want to team up with us? Well, they want to team up with us, A, because they know that the way that we handle our business is with integrity, and B, because it's a take-give relationship where we're always trying to help them grow 
and any opportunities that we see come to the marketplace, we bring it to them and bring up ideas to them about moving certain private label products that they may carry or just inventory that they might have that's stale. So it's not always about what we can gain from them. It's also about how can we help them to grow. Yeah, we continue to build relationships. It's still the foundation of our business. Sebastian just smashed a uh, catalog on, on my desk from a, a new distributor that I plan on starting to place an order with this week. Um, so I'm excited about that. That's yeah. one of my favorite things to do is place new orders with new companies. But with placing new orders with new companies comes a lot of, sometimes a lot of issues, especially with some of the companies we worked with, like... Uh, I forgot, it was like the small little toys, but they came like case packed with six different kinds in them. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so there's issues. And, and the first time you place that order, sometimes we like to be a little less aggressive. So if there are issues with the products coming in, we didn't go spend $50,000 on a first order. We maybe only spent $5,000. So if we have to eat some of those issues because we're, we don't want to call them and be on the phone with them complaining for 20 minutes about the misships or the, the mishaps, because that's not good for a relationship. We don't invest a huge amount of money in that first order so it doesn't tarnish the relationship if something goes wrong with it right and with any new uh new supplier you may pick up please be conservative at first just because like eric said kind of just to reiterate you don't know the quality of the product you don't know the quality of the company you don't know how they're going to handle uh your delivery i mean remember there was that one company we were dealing with and they had the sut on the product yeah uh, a couple of their products had like this uh, heavy layers like warehouse sut. dust but, yeah and uh so you you don't know you know when you're first ordering with a company you really don't know how they handle their products and so you want to be conservative on the first second order and and then from there, you know, you, you, you start growing that. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are we doing in these next couple of weeks to kind of wrap up the year for the Amazon business? Well, we're kind of looking at our numbers. Uh, we, we're going to sit down like we always do and kind of look over the year, uh, look over the data and see areas where we can improve. And then we're going to pass that information on to our managers, pass that information on in meetings with our buyers, with our warehouse, with our developers, and really set the goals and the agenda for mm -hmm. next year. You know, uh, the last two weeks of December is really about setting our goals for next year. Where do we envision ourselves being and how are we going to get there? Kind of building the roadmap yeah absolutely it's an exciting time and and something one of my favorite things that we do at the end of the year is we review all our distributors mm -hmm. and and sometimes this is one of the most challenging things i think for for us to do sometimes is let go of a distributor that for years produced us ton of revenue ton of profits but now their product costs just aren't cutting it for us anymore so it's it's important to know as a business when that retail store you're going to the prices just aren't competitive anymore or when that manufacturer you're dealing with for your private label pro product the prices just aren't competitive or when that wholesaler or distributor their prices just are too high and you need to let them go it's important it really separates the winners from the losers when you can make that conscious decision like i need to find a new company to do work with and even on a more micro level too, just ASINs too. We've had ASINs that we were selling truckloads of, mm. truckloads of, and because the climate of the Amazon environment's always changing, uh, we've had to let go, and it was hard, but every time we let go, it gives us opportunity to find another one, and we do, mm. and we do, and so will you. So just because a ASIN that was once profitable, uh, maybe right now isn't doesn't mean you need to hold on for your dear life hoping that it'll get better mm. again sometimes you need to let go and look for a new investment a new ASIN to to really take over uh, that space of where that last one was yeah we have um, speaking at good ASINs we have some killer ASINs right now in November man we got I was just looking we have some ASINs bringing us three thousand over three thousand dollars a month in profits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're seasonal yep Right, so these are products that the rest of the year would bring us little to any profits. If any, it would just build up storage fees if we sent it to Amazon. But because it's tis the season, we're crushing it, pulling in $3,000 in gross profits a month from these products. Yep, yep, and we have over 4,000 active ASINs, you know, and, you know, it fluctuates, but I always say building that healthy portfolio, that healthy online account, that healthy business, and this is how you do it. You have those high profit items that might move a little slower. You'll have high profit items that move high volume. Then you'll have low profit, low volume, and everything in between, mm -hmm. and that's what builds a healthy business where year over year, we continue to 
to grow. This year is by by far our most profitable year, mm. and last year was our most profitable year to date as well. Yeah. So, and it, and it's like that every single year as we continue to redevelop. And I think part of that goes into looking at the year, uh, kind of looking back, seeing the things, criticizing ourselves, seeing mm. where we could improve, and then building the roadmap for next year. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So based on that trend, 2020 is going to be killer. It's killer. Killer. No, seriously, we 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 have some cutting edge stuff for 2020. You know, I went to I went to Costco the other day uh -huh. um, for our Thanksgiving party to get some pumpkin pie. Did you which, start scanning? No, I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to, but um, they got the ill deals on everything over yeah. there. Yeah. But we used to do a lot of purchasing from Costco <clears> many <throat> years ago, and uh, and it's just every time I go there, it takes me back. Just Sebastian and I would go there for six, seven hours a day, and uh, just scan products. And you remember that transition, right? Where it was like, where it went from doing it five days a week to four to three to even one day a week was yeah. challenging. Yeah. Because the wholesale part took over. Took off, yeah. And people always ask us, like, when do you know? It just kind of happens. Yeah. You'll know because it happens, because you have a wholesale account or multiple wholesale accounts that are taking up so much of your time um, that you don't have any more time for RA. Mm. Yeah, and then. And it just like even at the end there, we were still going once a month. Yeah, we were placing monthly orders from our from our retail stores we were doing business with yeah. to supplement some of the income that and the revenue so we could continue to grow. So it's like it didn't. It took probably a year and a half yeah. before we completely cut off retail arbitrage and we came, uh, you know, a ninety percent wholesale business. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's like get it where you can get it. Get it what you know. If you're selling books right now and books are your bread and butter and you're trying to switch to retail arbitrage, don't stop selling books. Right. Keep selling books. Right. That's your bread and butter. Right. If you're doing retail arbitrage and want to switch to wholesale, don't stop going to stores and buying stuff. That's your bread and butter. Keep going doing retail right. arbitrage. If you're doing wholesale, want to do private label, don't stop doing wholesale. Do Get a few private label products and do both. Do all four. Yep. Can't hurt. So any last words to wrap it up, Eric? Yeah, it's hustle o'clock. Every day is hustle o'clock. You know, wake up, I, I think the best way to operate for me personally is I just wake up ready to tackle the day. And some days I'm not ready to tackle the day, but I just reflect for a couple minutes on all the beautiful things I have in my life. And it makes coming to work, it makes meeting with new people, it makes just being a presence in life with family, friends, business relationships. It just makes all that that much easier. So really at the end of the day, it's about my perception on life. And, and I change my perception and I change my life. What about you, Sebastian? My last words are evaluate your business, mm -hmm. build a plan, and get ready to conquer the next decade. Mm. Next decade. Wow. Tis the season. Tis the season. <laughs> Stay lit. Stay lit, everybody.